God is good. And his mercy endures forever. If you got your Bible, let's have our confession tonight. Say, this is my Bible. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. I can be who it says I can be. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive to receive the uncompromising, the unchanging, the infallible seed of the Word of God. For this is God's Word speaking to me. Look to your neighbor say, this is God's Word speaking to you. So be a doer of the Word and not a hearer only. You may be seated if you can. You know, we don't do that just to be doing it. We do that to get our hearts right, to receive what the Word of God has to say tonight. Hallelujah. Before we get started, I, I got word this afternoon. I guess you might have seen it. My wife was telling me. Um, preacher in Canada got arrested today. That is a shame. Uh, he got arrested because he, he wouldn't shut his church down. They, gave him, they arrested him and they told him he was going to spend six years in prison. And I was thinking about that on the way up here. You know, we're going to come against that. We're going to pray and believe God that he's going to be set free. Amen. Uh, he is a child of God. And kingdom principles and kingdom benefits belong to him. And you know, they locked Paul up, they locked Peter up, and, he, and God freed them. So let's just pray right now. I just felt led to pray. Father God, we come before you. Father God, it says, Any two agree together in your name, and it shall be done. Father, we pray for Pastor Pulowski, I think it is, Father God. We pray, Father God, the preacher in Canada, Father God, that, Father, he has a heart to serve you, Father God. He has a heart to teach the people about the Word of God, Father God, and, uh, that souls will be saved. And, Father, we just come against this demonic force. We come against these principalities that's trying to shut his church down. And for most of God, we pray against this, uh, that they, the, this uh, incarceration, Father God. We come against it right now, Father God. We don't know how. We don't know when, Father God, but we know that you're still in the miracle working business. And we pray the favor of God over that situation. We pray the peace of God be manifested to him. And he knows he is a child of God, Father God. And, uh, and freedom belongs to him. And we thank you for it. And we loose it right now. We loose his freedom right now in the name of Jesus. And everyone said... Amen. amen and amen. Thank God we live in America. We can still come and serve and worship God in freedom. Amen. Yes. Well, we've been talking about, uh, we've been on the subject of the kingdom of God. And last week we did the, uh, started the benefits of the kingdom. And I'm going to pick up on that tonight. Uh, this is the, the second part of the benefits of the kingdom. And the kingdom of heaven is a place in the spirit realm where God reigns. It's where he reigns and rules in the spirit realm. But it's also the rule of Christ over the earth as the redeemer. And of course, God's reign as the creator. It's also the blessings, the promises, and the benefits that flow to us when we live under the authority of Christ. Let me say it again. The kingdom of heaven is, is, is where the blessings, the promise, and all the benefits that flow to us when we live under the authority of Christ. Yeah. Now, these blessings don't only flow to us. It should flow in us, and it should flow through us. We should be the light that shines in this world today. Well, we know that God created man to rule and have dominion over all the earth. We talked about that last week. Through disobedience, man lost his position as ruler on the earth and Satan became the God of this world. And that's one of the reasons we're in the mess we're in now. But Satan is, he became the God of this world. But thank God for Matthew chapter 6, 33. Our responsibility, what we should do, seek the kingdom of heaven first. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek first. We should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and we talked about righteousness for the kingdom of God is maintaining righteousness. I mean, one of the requirements for the kingdom of God is maintaining righteousness. That is a requirement as being a kingdom citizen as we have to maintain the righteousness of God. Yeah. Are you with me tonight? Yeah. So we live, uh, we as Christians, we are required to live holy lives. That is why God gave his only son to die for us. We talked about a while ago, Jesus died on the cross for our sins so we can be purified by his blood. 
And when we're purified by his blood, we become holy. Jesus didn't die for our sins for us to keep living in it. He died for our sins to redeem us from it. So we don't live in sin no longer. Sin has no, uh, he has no power over us. Amen? Amen. We're dead to sin. Everybody say we're dead to sin. Dead to sin. We're dead to sin. But that's why it's important for us to live a life of repentance. We're not perfect. We do make mistakes. The enemy comes at us sometimes. And, but we do have to be quick to repent. I've always learned that. Be quick to repent. Don't wait on it. Be quick to repent, you know, um, and live a life of repentance. But we should live a life that is pleasing to our Father, the life that's pleasing to God. So really we should examine our hearts on a daily basis because we get distracted by things of the world. It's easy to get distracted this day and time by the things of the world. The world will pull on us. The world does pull on you. The enemy pulls on you. And he knows your weakness. The enemy knows where you're weak at. So we have to maintain righteousness. But ask the Holy Spirit to expose anything in your heart that may hinder you from seeking the kingdom of God. You may have to let go of some things. You may have to drop some things. You may have to drop some idols in your life. Or some idols in your heart. You know, we think of idols, we, we automatically think of a grave image, we think of a golden calf, you know, uh, when we think of idolatry. But idolatry really is what, uh, whatever you put most important in your life over God. Anything you put most important over Christ is idolatry. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. If you put more time and energy into things or habits or pleasures than you do God, then you're, you have trouble with idolatry. And, and let me say it this way. Don't let good things become God things. Don't let good things become God things. Because that's easy to do. So we've got to maintain righteousness. Amen? Maintain righteousness. We need to be intentional about putting God first in our lives. Be intentional about it every day. I struggle with that myself. I'm going to be honest. Be intentional about seeking God first every day in your life. And seeking God first requires you to have faith. Amen? It requires you to have faith. Faith is a requirement for the kingdom of heaven. We talked about last week righteousness is a requirement for the kingdom of heaven. But also faith is a requirement for the kingdom of heaven. You can't become a kingdom citizen without faith. It takes faith to have access to the kingdom. You have to believe God. You have to believe God died on the cross for you. And three days later rose from the grave. You got to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Amen? Amen. So it takes faith. So faith is a requirement for the kingdom of heaven. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You've heard that many times. My translation, faith is, the, faith is the confidence of what you expect will come about. And the certainty of what you can't see in the natural does exist. You've heard me say this before. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Are you with me tonight? So it's important. Faith is a certainty of what you cannot see does exist. So we see how faith is not only a requirement, but also faith is a benefit of the kingdom. It's not just a requirement, but it's also a benefit of the kingdom. Faith also is how we please the Father. Faith, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen? The Word says, without faith, it is impossible, impossible to please our Heavenly Father. But faith is also how we get our prayers answered. Right. Amen? Amen? It's how we get our prayers answered. Let's, let's start off with 1 Peter chapter 3. We're going to read in verse 10 through 12. Hallelujah. We're going to dive into about four set of scriptures here concerning the kingdom of heaven. Or the benefits of the kingdom. 
So 1 Peter 3, verses 10 through 12, and this is going to talk about our responsibility as a kingdom citizen. It says, He who love life and see good days. So if you love life and you want to see good days, there's about six, six conditions here that we have to do ourselves. Let him refrain from his tongue from evil. Amen. Refrain from his tongue from evil. <laughs> refrain from his tongue from evil. And his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Not only you got to turn away from evil, but your responsibility is to do good. Let him seek peace and pursue peace. So don't have to just seek after. You have to pursue the peace. These are six conditions here that we have to do to maintain righteousness. How do I know that? Look at verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are on the what? Righteous. Righteous. And his ears are open to their prayers. Amen. That's why it's important to maintain righteousness. You have the benefits of the kingdom when you maintain righteousness. His ears are open to their prayers. But look at this. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Amen. God hears the prayers of the righteous. Here Peter has given us four ways to experience the fullness of life even in the midst of of a corrupt nature or a corrupt world. Amen. These are four ways to experience the fullness of life even in our day and time today. As bad as it is, we can still experience the fullness of life. I said as bad as it is in this world, we can still, as a child of God, as a kingdom citizen, how many kingdom citizens do we have in the house tonight? We can still experience the fullness of God. The life of that God said that you can have. Not only good life, but a life of abundance. Because yes. God come to bring life and to bring it more abundantly. And the enemy comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. Let's look at Psalms 34. And this is going to reaffirm what we just said. Another scripture that verifies this. Psalms 34, verse 15 through 17. Once again, it says, The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. And his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. So you don't want to do evil. You want to maintain righteousness. Verse 17. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears the righteous. And delivers them out of how much trouble? All. All of their trouble. So really what the Bible, what the scripture is saying is your deliverance is determined by your righteousness. Or your deliverance depends on your righteousness. Is that not what it says? So you can say that righteousness is a requirement for God to deliver you out of all of your trouble. We are going to have trouble in this earth. We're not immune to it. There's going to be tests and trials and tribulation. God says on this earth you will have tests and trials and tribulation. But be of good cheer. Yeah. That means no matter what test, what trial, what tribulation you're going through, you still have the joy of the Lord. Amen. Be of good cheer means have the joy of the Lord. Amen. Even in the midst of your trial. That is not a natural thing to do. It's a supernatural thing to do. Amen? So we have to make, that's, you have to put forth an intentional effort to be joyful in the midst of your storm. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. So we see here deliverance is a benefit of the kingdom. Let's go to 1 John. 1 John chapter 5. Verse 14 through 15. When you get there, say amen. 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 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 through 15 says this. Oh, let me turn there because I want to go back to chapter thir verse 13. 
It says, now this. Now, I want to do this because I want you to see, or I want to show you what this is. When you see now this, you need to know what this is. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. We're going to start, let's say, now this is the confidence. Now this is. So let's go back to verse uh, 12 and 13. It says, for he has a son, has life. He who, has does, he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Verse 13. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. That is what this is. This is believing in the name of the Son. In other words, believing in the name of Jesus. That's what this is. So you could say believing in the name of Jesus is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, anything, the definition of anything is anything. According to his will. That's what a lot of people don't, they, 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 they kind of don't look at that. But ask anything according to God's will. According to his will, he hears us. Now, this, believing in the name of Jesus, you could put faith there. You could put faith in the beginning of that sentence. Faith is a confidence because when you believe in the name of Jesus, you have to have faith in order to believe in the name of Jesus. So you could say faith is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So we have to continue to believe in the name of Jesus. Not just when we're going through something, not just in our tests and our trials, but we have to believe in the name of Jesus on a continual basis. Amen. Are you with me tonight? Amen. So praying God's will is the perfect prayer, according to his will. Remember when the disciples asked Jesus, what is the perfect prayer? Jesus said, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. The only way for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven is through the kingdom citizens, which means through you and I. Amen. Yeah. That's the only way. Amen? Amen. It's through you and I. On earth as it is in heaven. Let's go to John chapter 9, verse 31. If you don't know by now, we do use the Bible on Wednesday nights. Hallelujah. <laughs> With Sunday morning, too. <laughs> I, uh, I caught you before you looked over. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> Hallelujah. We teach the uncompromised word here at Victory Life. Amen. Hallelujah. John chapter 9, verse 31 says, Now we know that God does not hear sinners. Did you hear me? That's what the word says. Now we know that God does not hear sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and he does his will, he hears them. So you got to be a worshiper of God. You got to put God first in your life, but you also got to do his will. He hears him. Everybody say, he hears us. He hears us. God listens to those that are in the kingdom. Thank God we're in the kingdom family of God. Our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. We have a registration with our name on it in glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To be a doer of these four set of scriptures requires us to have faith in God. God. We teach a lot of faith here at Victory Life Church. So having faith in God or having the God kind of faith is a benefit of the kingdom. It's not only a requirement. Faith is a requirement of the kingdom, but faith is also a benefit of the kingdom. Are you with me? Let's go to Matthew chapter 21. We're going to dive a little bit about faith tonight. Because faith is a benefit of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 21, and let's start with verse 20. It says, And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, talking about the fig tree, How did the fig tree wither away so soon? Remember the day before Jesus cursed the fig tree because he was 
hungry and it didn't produce any fruit. And Jesus cursed it, and they saw it when they come back. And they said, how did the fig tree wither away so soon? And look what Jesus said. Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, Be removed and cast into the sea. It will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Amen. Now here the mountain is talking, it's a metaphor. It could be anything that you're dealing with in life that you consider a mountain. It could be a healing. It could be a financial breakthrough. It could be a depression. Whatever is your mountain, it can be cast into the sea by your faith. Yeah. Yes, That's what Jesus said. I don't know about you, but I want stronger faith. Amen. I want my faith to build and get stronger. Amen? Amen? Faith is not only a benefit or requirement, but faith is necessary in the kingdom of God. Amen. It's necessary. Are you with me? It's necessary. It's not only a benefit, it's not only a requirement, but it is necessary in the kingdom of God. Because without faith, listen to this, without faith, the kingdom principles, or you could say the kingdom benefits, cannot be activated. Amen. Amen. Let me say that again. Without faith, the kingdom principles or the kingdom benefits cannot be activated. The only way to activate your principles, the promises, and, and the benefits of, the, of heaven is by faith. Amen. Nothing in the kingdom is received without faith. Amen. Nothing in, I said, nothing, nothing in the kingdom is received without faith. Amen. Without faith, the benefits of the kingdom are basically just closed to you. Without faith, the bene the, without faith, the benefits of the kingdom of God are closed to you. I don't know about you, but I want to activate my faith in the kingdom. Yes. Yes. Activate means to make active, to call something to function. I like that one. Call something to function. Your faith causes the kingdom benefits to function in your life. Your faith causes the kingdom benefits yes. to function properly Amen. in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're talking about faith. Now, faith is the currency that activates all the benefits of the kingdom. Amen. Are you still with me? Yeah. It takes faith to activate your benefits, but faith is the currency that activates all the benefits of the kingdom. Currency is necessary for quality of life in any country. Amen. Isn't that true? Amen. Yes. Currency right. is necessary for quality of life in any country. The amount of currency you have determines how much you can do in society. Amen. Is that not true? Yes. Faith is the currency of the kingdom of God. Without faith, you can get nothing. Without faith, you can do nothing in the kingdom. You have to have faith. Living a life of faith will also empower you for you to reach your full potential. It takes faith for you to reach your full potential. Because your potential was determined in the kingdom of God. God determined your potential. He put, your, he put the potential in you. In order to activate and access your full potential, it takes faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. As long as we try to live under kingdom culture in this world... As long as we live under kingdom culture while we're in this world, we will always have to battle 
between faith and fear. Faith and fear cannot be roommates together. The challenge is to make sure faith wins. Every single time. You got to make sure faith wins. That means fear cannot operate in your life. Some people say, well, I'm not operating fear, I'm operating wisdom. That's fine. You should operate in wisdom. Just don't let wisdom turn into fear. Fear will keep us away from the mountain. Fear will keep you away from the mountain. Faith will move the mountain. Fear will keep you away from the mountain. Faith will move the mountain. I'd rather move the mountain. God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Hallelujah. Amen. Fear cannot stand in the presence of faith. You can't operate in faith and fear. It's impossible. Amen. Oftentimes, Jesus will say, do not be afraid or don't be afraid. Often he said that. Let's look at Mark chapter 5, verse 35. I don't have that typed up, so I'm going to put that. I'm going to turn that with you. Mark chapter 5. Fear cannot stand in the presence of faith. The world is trying to put fear in our country, in our nation, in our world. But fear cannot stand in the presence of faith. Let's look at Mark chapter 5 in verse 35. Is that right? And this is when Jesus was, uh, he was still speaking. While he was still, this is, uh, this is just a, right after he, a lady with the issue of blood come and touched him when he was going through the crowd. Remember that story? The woman with the issue of blood. Jesus was saying, a lady come touch him because she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And she touched him. And immediately, she didn't just touch him in the natural. She touched him in the supernatural. She touched him by faith. And he knew someone touched him by faith. And he said, who just touched me? And the disciples said, what do you mean? There's, there's people thronging you all over the place. He said, no, someone touched me. The power went out in me. And he knew someone had touched him by faith. Now, this was right after this happened. It says, while he was still speaking, Jesus was teaching in the synagogue. Some came from the ruler some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house. Let me back up. The ruler of the synagogue's house was Jairus. So Jairus was the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, some people come and said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? So it tells me that they was trying to get to Jesus and they wanted Jesus to come heal the little girl before she died. But they said, your daughter is dead. Why bother Jesus now? Why bother the teacher any further? But as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, he said to Jairus, do not be afraid. Only believe. That's one of the nuggets I want to get to you tonight. No matter what's going on in this world, no matter what's going on in your circumstances, in your life, don't be afraid. Amen. Only believe. So anytime the enemy comes at you with whatever is going on in your life, remember that. Don't be afraid. Only believe. That'll help you get through any situation that you face in this country. Amen? In this world. So anyway, um, let me just read on. I like the story. It says, and, and he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. So he didn't just take anybody with him. He took people of faith with him. Then he came to the house of the rule of the synagogue and saw a tumult and that means a lot of people and those who wept and wailed loudly. There was people that was crying. There was, there was anguish because this little girl had died. And Jesus said, why make this commotion and weep? 
the child is not dead, but sleeping. And what did they do? This is just like people, isn't it? They ridiculed him. They mocked him. They talked about him. And what did Jesus do? Get out. Get out. He put every one of them outside. He didn't want that spirit in that house. Because he knew it would hinder the move of the spirit. The move of Jesus. He knew. He, got, he put them out. He took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him, which was Peter, James, and John, and entered where the child was lying. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, I don't know how you say this, Talitha Kumu, or Talitha Kami, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl rose and walked, for she was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. Yes. Yes. Jesus, don't be afraid, but believe. Don't be afraid, but believe. No matter what is going on, you got to put your total trust in God. That's what faith is. Faith is trusting God no matter what. Right. Now listen to me before you ridicule me. <laughs> Trust God no matter what. Whether he blesses or not, whether he delivers or not, whether he heals or not, whether he provides or not. He's the blesser, he's the deliverer, he's the healer, and he's the provider. But it might not come the way you want it to come. It might not come when you want it to come. It might not come on your time frame. But what do you got to do? Trust God. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Let's go to Daniel chapter 3. We're going we're gonna to give you an example. Uh, this is one of my favorite scriptures. I got a lot of stories. One of my favorite stories in the Bible. I don't have to turn. I got it written down here. It said Daniel chapter 3, verse 14 through 18. Oh, let me turn there. Sorry. I was going to give you a little. Anyway, um, everybody say glory. glory. Give me time to get there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 3. We're going to talk about uh, Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, Nebuchadnezzar, let's look at verse 1. I didn't have that one there. I went to verse 14 through 18. But I want to start in verse 1. It said, Nebuchadnezzar, the king made an image of gold. And it tells you how high it was. But Nebuchadnezzar made a golden image. And not only did he make a golden image, he made a law, a decree, and said, when you hear the music, when you hear the harp and the flute, when you hear these instruments playing, I want you to immediately bow down and worship this image. That's what he said. He said, I want you to bow down and worship the image. So let's pick up on verse 14. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, This was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know the story. They refused to bow down and worship this golden image. Amen. Even though it was the law and even though it was the decree. I like what Dad said Sunday. He said, I'm going to obey the law of the land until it interferes with the law of the word of God. Verse 14, Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? So he is, and, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, was, it, they weren't just, you know, peasants. They were rulers of the country. They were up high ranking of officials. And it says, Now, if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, and lyre, and psaltery, and symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was not afraid. They only believed. Verse 16, 
No, no, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, cast me deep. And who is the God? And at the end of verse 15, and this is uh, Nebuchadnezzar said, and who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? In verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. In other words, kind of like with all due respect, if that is the case that you said, if that is the case that you're going to put us in a fiery furnace if we don't bow down and worship another God, God whom we serve <laughs> is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But I like what it says in verse 18. It says, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, or nor we worship the gold image which you have set up. In other words, they were not afraid. But they were believing that their God was able then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And of course, you know the story. He commanded to heat the furnace up seven times hotter than normal. Cut the heat up. It was already hot enough to kill somebody. He said, turn it up seven times. And then, what, the two servants went in there to cut it up, or the people, that, and they burned up. They got close. They couldn't even, they burned up. Amen? Amen. And let's look at verse 22. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They was taking them to the fire furnace and they ended up dying themselves. And these three men, verse 23, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fire furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and he rose in haste and spoke saying to the counselors, now there was people all around, high officials were witnessing this. Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, that's true, O king. King said, look. He answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. Woo! Hallelujah. And they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not afraid. But they believed their God was able Amen. 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 They turned the whole thing around. And of course, you know the end of the story that came out, and they didn't even, the king took them out, let them out. Their hair wasn't singed, their clothes wasn't burned, and they didn't even smell like smoke. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My goodness. They were not afraid. That's what we got to be, folks. We got to be a Christian, we got to be kingdom citizens. In this world, yes. we're not afraid, but only believe. When in doubt, have faith. When you don't know what to do, believe. And when nothing makes sense in this world, put your trust in Almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My goodness. Whew. Don't be, afraid. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Hallelujah. Before we let you go, uh, we have any visitors here tonight for the first time? We'd like to get some information to you. We got a visitor right here. Thank you so much for being here tonight. We certainly appreciate you coming. We just want to get some package to you. Anybody else? Hallelujah. 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 Um. Anybody want to be born again? You haven't received Christ as your Lord and Savior. Anybody want to receive Christ? Make that step of faith tonight. And we're going to pray the prayer of salvation. Even though we, uh, we don't have anyone here in the church, we have gotten word that someone is watching online, and they want to receive Christ as their Lord and Savior tonight. 
Hallelujah. It's a friend of Lee Andrews, and I thank you, Lee Andrew, to be a witness in. And you've got, you, someone has entered the kingdom of heaven because of your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Keep sharing the word of God. Keep talking to people. You never know who you can touch because you touch people we can't touch. You got a circle of people we'll never see. Amen. So let's just pray. If you watched it online and you want to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, just pray this simple prayer after me along with the congregation. Say, Heavenly Father, forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you died on the cross for me and three days later rose from the grave. I promise to serve you all the days of my life. That's the simple prayer. You are now in the kingdom family of God. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to get into a good word church that will teach you how to grow and how to be in that kingdom. And this is, the, this, is, this is the life of luxury, being in the kingdom family of God. It teaches you how to overcome any situation in your life. Because we are overcomers. We live the life of victory. Why? Because he lived the life of victory. Amen. Hallelujah.